Hello Code Wizards, this is Margaret, your Code Wizards HQ instructor. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make your very own Flappy Bird game in Scratch. If you're new to Scratch, this is perfect. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step exactly how to make your game. So let's give it a try. This is our beautiful Flappy Bird game that we're gonna be making. And if we press the green flag, let's play it and see what happens. So when we press our space bar, we're guiding our Flappy Bird, our parrot, through these different obstacles. And every obstacle we get through, we score some points. But if we collide with the obstacle, oh no, our game ends. So this is actually a lot easier to code than it looks. Just follow along with me and I'm gonna show you exactly how. Step one, log into Scratch. Go to scratch.mit.edu and either join Scratch or if you already have an account, go ahead and sign in. I have an account, so I'm going to sign in using my username and password and then hit that sign in button. Now you should be in the Scratch landing page. Step two, create a new project. Once you're logged in, let's go up to that top left right next to the logo and we're gonna click on this create button at the top of the page. This should open up a new project. If you're new to Scratch, let's take a quick tour. On the left-hand side, we have our different code categories, and you can see they're color-coded. And then we have these blocks here, and these are our code blocks. We're gonna put them into our program area here in the middle. And this is where we're going to create our program and add our code to our sprite. On the right, we've got this uh, area where we can actually see our game, a preview of our game, and then right underneath that we have our sprite options and also some uh, different properties for our sprite that we can edit here. On the bottom right we've got our backdrops and you'll be able to see the backdrops here. At the top we have these different tabs for our code, our costumes, and our sounds. On the left hand side we have our code blocks. We're going to click and drag these code blocks into the middle to create our program. On the right hand side, we're gonna see a preview of our program or game or whatever we're building. Right underneath that, we've got our different sprites. And these are all of the characters and images that are gonna be in our game. On the bottom right, we can see our different backdrops here. Step three, name your new project. Now let's give our project a name. So up here where it says untitled, double click on that and then give your project a creative name. I'm gonna call mine Flappy Bird Game. So now you should see your name there. If you click off of it, it will go ahead and save that for you. Now, since we don't need it, we're gonna delete this cat sprite here. And every time you create a new project, you're gonna see this cat. You can just delete it by using this little trash can right to the top of it. And click on the trash can and the cat sprite is gone. Now you have a fresh, clean project to start with. Before we move on, let's talk about X and Y coordinates. In Scratch, our images are called sprites. And Scratch uses these X, Y coordinates to position our different sprites on the screen. So if a sprite is at X, zero, Y, zero, it's right in the middle of the screen. So an X coordinate is a number of pixels along this horizontal or right and left axis. A Y coordinate is a number of pixels along this vertical or up and down axis. All right, so we start at zero, zero with X and Y in the middle. And then X gets more positive to the right and more negative to the left. Y gets more positive going up and more negative going down. We're gonna use these X and Y coordinates to position our sprites and then change the coordinates to move them around on the screen. Step four, choose a backdrop. Now let's go to the bottom right and we're going to select this choose a backdrop option. If you hover over that, you can click on choose a backdrop. When that screen opens up, you're going to see Scratch has all these really cool options that you can use for backdrops. In this tutorial, I'm using the jungle backdrop. So I'm going to search for jungle and it pops right up. When you click on it, you're going to see it in your preview area. You can choose whatever backdrop you want, just make sure you're seeing it in your preview. Does everyone see their backdrop in their preview? Okay, great, let's keep going. Step five, choose a sprite. Now let's add a sprite. Let's hover over the sprite cat and we're gonna say choose a sprite. And same thing, you get this awesome library of different sprites that you can use. And if you search at the top, I'm gonna use the parrot sprite, our flappy bird. 
So the parrot here, if I click on that, now I'm gonna see this sprite in my preview area and in my sprites down here. You can choose a bird sprite or whatever you wanna use for your Flappy Bird game. You should see your sprite or character on your preview screen now, so make sure you see. Step six, resize and position the sprite. My bird on my screen is pretty big. I wanna make him a little bit smaller. So if I go down to here, I see size and it, where it says 100, I'm gonna click on that and change that to 50. So I changed the size of my sprite and now it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to click on it and I can move it around my game screen. I'm gonna move it to the left where it's going to start before the obstacles reach it. Good job so far, you guys are doing awesome. Step seven, add the first code block. Okay, this is the fun part. We're gonna add some code to our sprite. First, let's go to the yellow events category on the far left. Click on it, and then you're gonna see a when green flag click block. Click on that and then drag it over into our program screen. This is the beginning of our code. While wow, you've written your first little piece of code, let's keep it going. Step eight, set the sprite's starting position. We always want our parrot to start on this left-hand side. So we're gonna write some code to make sure it does that. If you go to the left, we're gonna go to this motion category in blue, and then we're gonna pick the go to X block and then click and drag it underneath that when green flag clicked. This means when green flag clicked, go to, and remember our X, Y positioning, X at this position and Y at this position. Let's test this out. Let's move our parrot somewhere else, and when we click the green flag, it should go to this position. So click the green flag. Awesome, it's working. Test yours out, make sure it's working like that. Step nine, add gravity to the game. Now let's add some code to make our parrot fall. So this is like gravity. Our parrot's gonna get pulled towards the ground, but when we click our space bar, he's gonna fly up. So first, let's add some gravity here. So let's go to the orange control blocks and let's grab this forever loop all right this means that whatever code is inside this forever loop is going to keep happening forever now let's go to the motion category and we're going to get a change y by all right we're going to change our y position and inside of that let's put negative 15. if you remember earlier we said y position is going up and down right so going down is negative so we're going to change y by negative 15. Now when you press the green flag, the bird is gonna drop really fast, right? Our Y is gonna change by negative 15 and go down forever. So click the green flag, try it out. Oh, and there it goes, it's falling. If yours is doing that, it's working perfectly. Step 10, make gravity slower. If we don't want our sprite to fall so quickly, we can put a wait block from the control category before our change Y by. So we're gonna wait before we change Y by negative 15. So let's go to our control category and then we're gonna take wait and we're gonna put that above the change Y by negative 15. So instead of one second, let's change it to 0.1 seconds. All right, so now when we click the green flag, it's gonna to go to this X and Y position and it's gonna wait one second and change Y by negative 15. And that's gonna keep going because it's inside of this loop here. So let's also test this out. Click your green flag and see what happens. Nice, our sprite is falling much slower. Take a sec to make sure your game is working. If it's not, double check your steps and make sure it gets to this point where it's falling slowly. When your game is working, let's move on. Step 11, make the bird fly up. Now let's make it so our player can interact with the game. Every time we press the space bar, our sprite is going to fly up. So go to the events category, click when space key pressed and bring that over into your program area. Now when space key is pressed, we wanna increase Y, right? Y is positive going up. So let's get another change Y by block in our motion blocks. Add that to the when space key pressed. We're gonna change Y by, and instead of 10, let's use 50. So our bird can fly up every time the space key is pressed. Check that out. Press the green flag and let's see if our sprite moves up when we press the space bar. 
Yes, it's working. Every time we press the space bar, our sprite is moving up by 50, but it's still dropping at the same time. Hopefully yours is working. Really good job so far. Step 12, design the game's obstacle. To do this, we're gonna draw the obstacle that our sprite has to go through. And you can make this whatever you want. We've got some pipes here that our Flappy Bird has to go through. Let's hover over the new sprite button and we're gonna go up to choose paint. This is where we get to draw our own sprite. My pipe is just made up of a couple rectangles. So if I click on this rectangle button, I'm just gonna click and drag out a rectangle and another one on top of that. And let me make the bottom part. And I need to leave a space big enough for my sprite to go through. All right, so dragging this out and creating one more rectangle underneath that. And now I have my pipe, my obstacle that my sprite is gonna go through. You can create an obstacle however you like, whatever matches your theme, make something that works for you. Step 13, animate the obstacle. Now we have our obstacle, we need it to move around, right, so that our Flappy Bird can try to avoid it. Let's go ahead and click on the code tab at the top. Now we have our obstacle sprite, let's add some code here. So go to the events category and grab a when green flag click, this will start our code. In the control category, let's add a forever loop. Next, let's go to the motion category and drag a set Y2 block and set X2. So we're gonna set our X and Y position. So here in our motion category, we're gonna set X2 and set Y2. So remember, X is our horizontal position, right and left. And X over here was about 275. And this is where we want our uh, obstacle to start. So let's set X to 275. Our Y, let's leave it as 28 for now. Now we want it to move from right over to left. So we're gonna use this glide one second two, and we're gonna change the X and Y position to be over here on the left hand side. All right, so let's do, instead of one second, let's glide two seconds, and we're gonna change X to negative 275. Remember on our left hand side, this was more negative, right? So the opposite of our X275 is our negative 275. Now let's keep the Y position the same. So if we move down in our motion category, we get this Y position variable. So this Y position is gonna be the same as what you set this Y position to. So Y position, use that variable. Now this is going to glide two seconds to X negative 275 and whatever Y position we set earlier. Let's click the green flag. Let's see if this actually works. Click your green flag, make sure that your obstacle is moving. Very cool, it should be doing this. Hopefully it should be moving from the right to the left side of the screen. Double check that that's all working well. Nice job so far, we're almost there. Step 14, randomly position the obstacle. When we test our project here, we see that the pipes are staying the same, right? This gap here is staying the same. So that's not very fun, that's not very challenging for our players. We want this little gap here that our flappy bird has to go through, we want that to change every time. So let's set a random position. Let's go to the operators category and we're gonna get this pick random and let's make Y a random number between negative 65 and 65. So that's going up and down 65 to negative 65, if you remember our graph for our X and Y coordinates. If you wanted to change more, you can change these numbers. Step 15, end the game upon collision. Nothing happens right now when our sprite runs into our obstacle, right? Our parrot collides with the pipe and nothing happens. Let's add some code to make something happen when these two things run into each other. So let's grab a when green flag clicked from our events category. And we're gonna get another forever loop from our control category. So add both of those to your code. Now we're gonna use, underneath that, you're gonna see an if then block. Let's put that inside of our forever loop. This means that if something happens, some condition, then run this code. The code inside here only happens if our condition is true. Now go to the sensing category and let's add this touching. So this is our condition. If touching 
and we're gonna change this to whatever sprite you're using for your uh, character. I mean, mine is the parrot, right? My floppy bird is the parrot. So if touching parrot, then what should happen? Then we wanna stop everything. That's when the game ends. So let's go to our control category again. And at the bottom, there's a stop all block. Let's put stop all inside of our if then block. Step 16, test your complete game. Your obstacle should be going up and down and moving right to left, and your flappy bird should be able to move every time you click on the space bar. If they run into each other, the game should stop. Click my green flag, and it seems to be working, and if I run into it, perfect, everything stops. So that's what I want to happen, right? Now I have an ending to my game. Great job on your game, everything is working. Now let's add a little bit of a bonus, let's add a point system. Step one, create a variable. In your code, let's go to the variable section and you're gonna see my variable. Right click to rename your variable. Step two, name the variable. In this pop-up window, let's change my variable to score and then press okay. Now you'll see our variable called score and this is going to represent our score that changes from one to two to three and on up. Step three, display the score. When we click the check mark next to score, we're gonna see it show up in our game screen. Step four, update the score. In our variables category, let's drag a set score to zero. So the score starts at zero and let's put that underneath our when green flag clicked. Then get a change score by one, and every time our obstacle moves from the right to the left, we're gonna change the score and increase it by one. That means our player scores one every time our sprite goes through the obstacle. Step five, test the score. Now let's click on our green flag and see if our score is working. Let's see if we get increase one every time we get through the obstacle. Click the green flag. Oh, my score changed. Oh, now I have two. And perfect, this is working great. And then, just like before, when we run into our obstacle, that's when the game ends. How's your score working? Hopefully you were able to add that. And now you have a complete game. Wow, what a great job you did today. If you had fun doing this Scratch tutorial, make sure you like and also subscribe for more Scratch content. If you wanna dive deeper into Scratch and also learn how to code and make games from the experts, check out our elementary school coding program at codewizardshq.com. Until then, keep coding and I'll see you next time.